Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about bitwise operators. Now bitwise operators are one of these things that aren't really understood by a great deal of programmers. They're not used a great deal anymore, so you can kind of get away without understanding them, but they're a great thing to have in your tool belt and you never know when you might need to use them. If you end up writing algorithms for encryption or video compression, then it's definitely something you're going to need to know. In my last video, I talked about binary numbers. If you missed it, then make sure you check it out at the end of this video. As you can probably guess from the name, bitwise operators work on individual bits. So if you want to work with binary numbers and perform operations on them, then you need to use bitwise operators. Bitwise operators aren't the most intuitive of things. So before I get started, let's have a look at why we would want to use them. Bitwise operators used to be used a lot more when computers didn't have as much memory as they do now. If you're working on embedded devices that do have a memory limitation, then they're still very, very useful when you need to know them. The smallest amount of space that a variable can take up is one byte. The reason for this is it's the smallest unit of addressable space that a CPU can reference. Even a Boolean variable that can only really have the values true and false should only really take up one bit. But in fact, it takes up a whole byte with the rest of the seven bits just padded out. Obviously, this isn't a great thing to have if you've got a small device that's got a limited amount of memory. Now, you've probably used flags in your application, so just Boolean true-false values. Now, most applications, especially those that are referencing physical hardware, will have multiple flags that you want to use. Now, if you've got multiple flags in your application and each of them are taking up a byte, then obviously that's going to use a lot more memory than you need to. Now, one of the things that programmers do to save space is to store multiple Boolean flags in one byte. As a byte is 8 bits, that means that you can store 8 different Boolean flags in one variable which is just what you need if you've got a small device and you're trying to save memory. The one place that you might have seen multiple flags being used like this is on Unix file systems. So you might have seen file permissions with things like 644 or 777. These three numbers make up the different groups for permissions on a Unix file system. So the first number will be the owner, the second number will be the group they belong to, and the third number will be everyone else. Each number tells you the permissions that that particular group has. So they'll tell you whether you can read the file, write the file, or execute it. To really understand what each of those numbers means, you need to convert the number into binary first. So typical numbers that you might see on a file permission would be like seven, which in binary is one, 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 which means they can read, they can write, and they can execute. Then there's six, which in binary is one, one, zero, which means they can read and write to the file, but they can't execute it. And lastly, there's four, which in binary is one, zero, zero, which means that they have the ability to read the file, but they can't write to it and they can't execute it. Now that we have an example in mind, let's have a look at the bitwise operators and how they work. There are six bitwise operators that you need to know, and we're going to have a look at each of them and work out what they do. Now, the first operator that we're going to look at is the AND operator. This is normally denoted with a single ampersand in most programming languages. The best way to describe these operators is by using truth tables. So if we have a look at the numbers seven and six, so seven is one, 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 and six is one, one, zero. Using these bitwise operators does a comparison between each of the bits in the number. So for the AND operator, it's gonna tell us whether each of those bits match. And if they do, then it will give us a one. If they don't, it gives us a zero. Here we can see that the first two rows have one in each column. So the bit matches, in which case the result's going to be one for those rows. For the last row, the bits don't match, so that's going to end up with a value of zero. So our final value for doing seven and six is going to be one, one, zero, and therefore the result is six. Going back to our file permission example, the AND operator can actually be used as a test to see if the user has permissions to do something. As the AND operator only gives us back the matching bits, if we compare our user's permissions with our required permissions, then we're going to get back our required permissions as, as the final result if they match. If they don't match, we're going to get back zero. The next operator we're going to look at is the OR operator. The OR operator compares each individual bit and will give you a result if either one or the other is set to one. If we look at the numbers five and six in binary in our truth table, we're going to see that for every row, that at least one of them is one. And therefore, the final result is going to be one, 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 which is seven in decimal. Now in programming, you can use the OR operator to combine multiple permissions. So say you have the read permission and the write permission, you want the user to have both read and write. You can use the OR operator in this case to combine those permissions and get a final permission set. If we do that in a code example, this is what it would look like. So we'd have the read and write permissions that we combine with an OR, and then the final permission is therefore gonna be six. You can also use the OR operator when assigning a value as well. 
Let's say we want to give the user the execute permissions on top of their current read write permissions. In this case, we can use the or assignment operator to give them the execute permissions on top of what they already have. So if they have read write permissions at the moment, they currently have the value is six, but if we add execute permissions on top, that's going to give them a final result of seven. The next operator we're going to look at is the exclusive or operator. Now this requires each of the bits to be the opposite of each other. When one is zero, the other one has to be one. If we look at the values five and six again, for the first row, both of the bits match, and therefore the value is going to be zero with an exclusive or. But for the second two rows, the columns are either zero or one, and therefore the final result is going to be one with an exclusive or. So in binary, we have the value zero, one, one as a result, which would be three in decimal. If we go back to our permissions example, we can use the exclusive or to remove a permission from an existing permission set. So let's say the user has read write permissions, but you want to remove the write permissions from the user. You can do this with an exclusive or operator on the assignment. So the next operator we're going to look at is the not operator. The not operator is going to give you the opposite value for each of the bits in your number. Unlike the other operators we've been looking at, the not operator doesn't work on two values, it works on one value. The not operator will take a number, put it into bits, and then flip the value of each of those bits in the number. If we take the number five, for example, five in binary is one, zero, one. So if we use the not operator on it, the final result is going to be zero, one, zero. If you do this example in Python or any other language, you're probably going to get a negative number as the result, which might be a bit surprising at first. As I mentioned in my last video, when you're dealing with signed bytes, the first bit of that number denotes the sign. If it's a one, then it's going to be a negative number. If it's a zero, it's going to be a positive number. When you're using the not operator, it's going to be flipping all those bits. So the first bit's going to become one, which is therefore going to make the number negative. As Python uses an eight bit number to represent small numbers, five is going to look like this in binary. If we use the not operator, all of the bits get reversed and therefore it becomes this. Binary numbers use something called the twos complement representation. All you really need to understand is if it's a negative number and therefore it starts with one, the rest of the number is counting up from minus 128. So if we take this number and start from minus 128 and then add on all of the other bits, we're going to get the final result of minus six. The last two operators we're going to look at are the operators left shift and right shift. As the name suggests, these operators shift the bits of a number either left or right. Again, like the not operator, the shift operators only work on a single number. And the second number denotes how many bits you want to shift the number by. So if we take the number five in binary, which is this, if we use the left shift operator and shift all the bits by two, we're going to be moving all of those bits two bits to the left. And therefore the final result is going to look like this. When you're shifting numbers to the left, the leftmost bits of the number are just going to get discarded. In our case, they're just zero anyway, so it doesn't actually make a difference. But if you have a number that has all ones, then you're going to be losing some of those bits when you move it up. So if we take the number five and shift it by two bits, the final result is going to be 20. If we then take 20 and then shift it two bits to the right, it's no surprise we're going to get number five again. And that's really all there is to it. That's the six different bitwise operators. They can seem a bit scary at first, but once you get to thinking in binary numbers, they're not too bad. If binary numbers are a bit confusing, then make sure you watch my last video on binary numbers, which you can check out here. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.